on the air episode 126. Smack. I'm so excited that we have a full audience every time. I thought we'd have oh, like yeah. three people. Give it up for the audience. Come on. I'd like to point someone out. We are very famous. I have a friend right here, Randy, Randy. Hollander Hawk. Uh, her dad Randy. is an icon. Her dad was chief of police and sheriff. So give it up for Mr. Yeah. Bill Collender. Wait, police chief Bill Collender is your dad? Yes. Um, your cousin is Beth Green. Oh, gosh, yes. All right. She worked at Price Club. Pardon? She oh, worked yes. at Price Club. And didn't one of you guys own the Ken Cinema or something like that? Family. Do yes. you remember the Ken Cinema? Yeah. Like, if you wanted to watch a Humphrey uh, Bogart movie, you'd go to North Park and you'd watch To Have or Have Not or something like that. Look at you. <laughs> well, welcome. Give her a hand. <laughs> How do you know each other? Uh, she's been through KUSI a lot. And she does a lot for the Alzheimer's uh, walk. The and uh, yeah, wasn't Bill Collender one of those police chiefs that were that was front and center? Yes. And and did the community role kind of like Shelley Zimmerman? He was he was fantastic. Yes. He we need. Created community yeah, there he was. Mm -hmm. Handsome dude too. No, no. It's all right. Well, we got a great show lined up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's bring out our very first guest. <laughs> That's interesting. One of the most Walk successful outside. entrepreneurs in San Diego history. The co-founder of Taylor Guitars. Give it up for Bob Taylor. Wow. <laughs> Was that difficult? Because I know you hate that. Love you, Bob. This is really odd for hey, a guy who really spent crazy. his whole life trying not to be noticed. And, I was gonna say that was difficult for you. It was really it? hard. As he's walking out, I'm going, you know, Bob Taylor goes to like I'm not uh, concert, like crazy. Sting is playing a Taylor guitar, and he's hiding behind the popcorn stand. Well, <laughs> don't tell him I'm here. Well, Give speaking, me the, the problem is you don't have any shadows up here for me to. Lurk speaking in. of Taylor guitars, yeah. you know Taylor Swift recently in the news. <laughs> he's currently now um, on tour, probably going to gross at least two billion dollars. And when you hear that, what do you think of Taylor? Because early in her career, she came to you in your in your office. No, she, the home. he thinks of Nam. I bet. Well, you know, I I ran into um, a friend. He's a he's the um, attorney for Yamaha's you know yeah. guitar division, and um, and he said the first time I met you, Bob. Let me tell you about it. I go. I don't remember when I met you, Mike. He's, and he says we were at the Nam show. And you came out in the foyer, and there were all these people, and you grabbed me, and you said, come in here, I got this girl sitting on a stool, and there's no one for her to listen to, or to listen to her. You, you got to come here. And I pulled him in, and he goes, and then you gathered like 50 people, filled up that room, and that girl on the school, stool was Taylor Swift, right? Oh, wow. you know, so it was, it, it was pretty fun. Come on, that's, that's iconic. Also, you go from there to that. Got nothing to do with me. She's going regardless of me. But, but she plays I mean, a Taylor. She sure does. And there's a there's a lot of video of her with a blue guitar. Tell she, us about that. Well, that one's become real famous. Her fans just love it. I, I gave her a guitar once for uh, Christmas, and we made these guitars that were blue, and they had koi fish swimming down the neck. And no, my, yeah, you, you gave me one that has a, the bamboo in it. it yeah, right? exactly. Blue, right? So this one was beautiful, and I think when she was around 18. She got that guitar, wow. and uh, and she uh, she'd bought all of her guitars wow. up to that yeah. point and even beyond. You know, and so you know it's it's become a famous guitar. People go nuts about it. You know, Tim Godwin is your artist relations person for your guitars, and it's interesting because um, you don't really have to recruit. Like the biggest stars in the world come to you. Many of them do, and. Um, 
we get to participate. It's fun. If we can help them play music, that's what we want to do. We have no contracts. We don't do any. We don't do like artist endorsement kind of no. things. And what's we just cool? Help. And what's cool? They don't go to you in Hollywood. They don't go to you in San Francisco or New York. They go to a town called El Cajon. Sometimes they I mean, do. Casa how cool is that? <laughs> right. I remember back in the old days when our shop was really small. I mean, we've got a lot. Of, it's a big company now, but. Um, you know, these tour buses are coming. Here comes Faith Hill, or here comes the Dixie Chicks, or here comes, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, when our shop was in Santee, a little yeah. 5,000 square foot place, and this tour bus would pull up. Well, it's almost like the first time, you know, Tommy or myself heard, heard ourselves on the radio. It's surreal. So when yes. you're sitting in a concert where there's Sting or there's any number of artists, are you still like, I remember when I made that first guitar in my, in my garage. I'm thrilled. Yeah. I'm thrilled. I remember when I... <clears throat> went down to the Pacific Cinerama in Mission Valley and watched Neil Young play a 12-string in, what, 1976? Play one of our guitars in his movie, Russ Never Sleeps. And that was nervous, because all the, I took, like, three friends, and they're, and they're talking to everyone around. Hey, he's going to play one of his guitars. And I'm like, shut up, guys. I don't know that you're going to do that. Just, like, be quiet, you know? All that kind of stuff. That's totally But what cool. I really like to use my my entrance ticket that Bob Taylor named for yeah. isn't that. It's to get into all the other guitar factories around the world. They always welcome me in, yeah. whether it's in China or the United States, and sit down and have a serious com conversation about environmental sustainability, the trees we use, where do you get them, how do you, get, do you know where your trees come from, do you know where your wood comes from, and so I've been doing that the last 12 years. You know, we have to talk about that because it really is uh, special that you are putting that First and foremost, when you're when you're building guitars, and yeah, I don't think anybody else ever thought about it, right? We don't think about it, and you know this wood just comes, but it comes. You, guitars use a lot of tropical woods, and there's a lot of lawlessness out there, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and I always say invest in the inevitable, right? And it's inevitable that we're gonna we're gonna deplete this resource, and so we need to plant. We need to be very careful about where the wood comes from. Are you privately held or are you public? Well, we're, um, we're an ESOP now. We're 100% employee. Wow, look at you. Yeah. It's like SAIC here in San Diego. Your, like SAIC. Your, your employees own the company. The employees own the company. Which is incredibly generous and also yeah. lucrative for a retirement plan for most of your employees. You understand what that is. That's it's, totally. It's fantastic. If you yeah. come and work and stick around... I like to say we're trying to bring sexy back to pension, you know? <laughs> Are you back? Was, was it one time there? It used to be there. Can, can you send me and Tommy the paperwork? I, we don't I'd like to be an employee. <laughs> let's roll. Come on. All right, let's bring out our next guest. He is synonymous to the San Diego County Fair. Ah. Get on your feet, ladies and gentlemen. Rick and Charlie. You know, uh, Look we, at asked, this. we asked Charlie to bring something simple. I know. I will cut pineapples in half, carve them out, put chicken in them. It'll take like four hours a piece, but we'll be fine. You Dude. could have brought French fries. We would have been fine. Dude, what a beautiful studio and beautiful you, people. Look at this. Is this your first time here? This is my first time in this studio. Wow. You guys, I'm honored. You guys have had me over a few times, oh, yeah. but it was a different place. And we got to, this is gorgeous. But I mean, you are synonymous to the San Diego County Fair. I, I, you're, the, you're the Don Diego of the <laughs> county fair. I love it and I hate it. It's like, I love what I do. I love the San Diego Fair, but I never want to think that I'm anything special. I just want to cook and feed people, you know? Okay, like, wait a second. You have a five-story uh, bus that sells food. That's right. And, and um, <sighs> you, you uh, donate to the local uh, GDP, number one. Number two... I know you don't like to be transitory, which is why you did Sticks and Bricks, but you are an icon in terms of food here, I'm, as I'm much so as Ralph honored. Rubio, correct? Yeah. I, I love what I do. I really do. I love yeah. going to work every day. I love people's faces when they see the food and the crazy concoctions at the fair. Um, I love hiring all the people that we hire. I love that whole program. You know, it's, it's a wonderful life. Just, Just like, like Bob Taylor 
you're also good to your employees. Very good. Yeah. Without my employees, we got nothing. That's right, man. Right? Who's your favorite employee of all time? Um, your, <laughs> your daughter. I ask this every time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's you the know, one. I've had, I've had the pleasure and the honor of having a lot of my friends and other guys in the county as kids work. Along my whole family's children, as they're growing up, they all get to work yeah. at Chicken Charlie's. It's a really cool deal for a kid, 15, 16, 14, for a first job. Well, they're it's faced really forward. Cool. They're, fa they're forced to deal with uh, the public uh, and right. issues and money and all that. But what I love about it is it has an end date. I think that's why it's so successful. Because I'm not going to raise my kid and tell them, go get a job at the fair. But if you go get a job at the fair and it ends in a few weeks, you get to make a little money, get the experience. But well, let me tell you this. Both of my daughters brag about, you know, the first job was Chicken Charlie's. I love they, it. It was in the Apple Store. <laughs> like, I love it. I love it. That's beautiful. The, um, the thing for me is that, look, you have sort of pivoted every single year towards the taste of what you think is San Diego. I mean, you had deep, you had deep fried butter at one point. Let's face it. How do you decide what? menus, and when does that happen? The, the deep fried butter wasn't me, but I did the deep fried. I invented deep fried Oreos, the bacon wrap pickle, the Krispy Kreme chicken sandwich, the fried Kool Aid. Many of them, right? Let's but, bring them out. But, Come on! <laughs> By the way, bacon wrap fried pickle is our Come new on. band name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, You're gonna be but how does that, that work? Sound good. Charlie, how does that work? Are you at home? Are you in a Dude, kitchen? Everywhere you know, I go, when I go to sleep, when I wake up, I'm always thinking, can I fry it? You know, that's, <laughs> I mean, it's what I do. We're doing fried, right? fried it's, chicken next week. Yeah, you know, fried chicken, stuff it with ice cream, wrap it in bacon, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But, Wait, but it's so working. You just, so the you cool, just did that right there, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, the cool thing is, um, it has to look good because we eat with our eyes. It has to taste good because we're not dumb, right? So once you accomplish those two things, it's amazing. It's like money because we all want something different. We all want something new. And we want to enjoy, you know, our days like between kids and work and this and that. Now you get ice cream stuffed chicken. Now you're all, all of a sudden, it just changed your day. <laughs> That's what I love do about you, the wait, fair. Wait, wait. Do you really have ice cream? I actually do. I have, uh, I, when I invented Krispy Kreme chicken sandwich, I put a chicken, fried chicken breast inside of a donut. Um, I think that was 2006. What I got on can the go front wrong? page of the LA Times, yeah. With President Bush and Hugo Chavez, I was on the front page for that. The following year, I did it with a burger. The following year, I decided to um, put, put a, a scoop of vanilla ice chicken. cream. Yeah, so you put the chicken breast, scoop of vanilla ice cream, and the donut, and eat all that together. I know it doesn't make sense to the brain. But does it come with a card but it's that goes with the uh, it's <laughs> it's one one. One. Does it come with it? Comes, it comes with a defibrillator. <laughs> but everything. <laughs> I'm everything you too. everything you come out with has been a success. Is there an idea um, that didn't work? That I mean, it's always tough to beat the years before. So the year of the fried Kool Aid was huge. I mean, yeah. huge. Excuse me. I don't even get that. Fried Kool Aid. Yeah, deep fried Kool Aid. I was just thinking like there's like there's there's oil here, there's some batter here. <laughs> You sprinkle the Kool-Aid in, and that's fried Kool-Aid? I'm not going to tell you all my secrets, but all I'm going to tell you is it was freaking amazing. We take the Kool-Aid powder, we take flour, sweet flour, we mix it together, we made a batter, we fried the Kool-Aid. But it was huge, right? So the following year, it was really hard to beat that. And the following year, my big item was deep fried cereal. It did okay. So to answer you, it was okay. We sold quite a bit. But it wasn't like the Kool-Aid. I mean, I got on the front page of a Beijing newspaper for that. <laughs> it was, well, this crazy. guy has the audacity to sell deep-fried Kool-Aid. Um, yeah, uh, maybe that's how they were looking is, at it. <laughs> is, is, there, is there a I thought of it differently. Like they love. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a creative out outlet for you having, oh, yeah. having sticks and bricks versus just the fair? Is, cooking, is that your outlet? Cooking is an art. Frying is an art. No. Um, I was, before my, I had a, I have a restaurant now in Rancho Bernardo, and I used to have one in Claremont. Um, before that, that was from 2014, before that, for the 30 years I've been doing this, my house, my kitchen at home was my test kitchen. Yeah. When I got the restaurant, it was beautiful because now I do it all with my employees and friends at the restaurant. So you come visit me at the restaurant, sometimes I'm like doing the wackiest stuff back there, but just for fun for the fair. And when you're at the fair, every time you walk by Chicken Charlie's, there's a long line of people. I mean, you have the longest line. Because you guys I are mean, super get slow. Get up early, work hard, you get but I mean, lines. is it just incredible? <laughs> I mean, without mentioning numbers, is it just out of... It's, you know what? I grew up very poor. I came, I'm a first-generation American. 
I came to America when I was 11, didn't speak a lick of English. <laughs> I learned it. It's my third language. I wanted to work hard. I wanted to have the American dream. I got up early every morning. As my friend always said, uh, what's that saying? The early worm gets the whatever. Early, yeah. early yeah. worm early catches sir. the bird. So, so, <laughs> so I Nailed it. So I don't remember the saying, but I live it every day. I get up early, go get it. Get up early, go get it. And I think it's just, you know, hard work pays off. Can we ask you, what is the latest, what's the newest thing you invented in terms of uh, food? So years ago, newest, like two days ago, years ago, um, I put chocolate on bread and toasted it, and it was freaking amazing. And my friends thought I was crazy. We debated selling it, not selling it. We did what it the at hell? the. Why did I not? Th- I, yeah, why this did is we 25, think of that? 25 years ago when I did it. It was amazing. My friends thought it wasn't. I sold it at the San Diego County Fair. It didn't go well. Um, later, we have chocolate croissants and everything else with chocolate, with breads. A couple of days ago, I made a little video. It's um, So I went to Albertsons next door, bought some French bread, toasted it with a lot of butter, got it real nice and crispy, and put a whole lot of ice cream in it. <laughs> and topped it with chocolate syrup, and I ate it. It was my ice cream sandwich with the bread. It was friggin' amazing. Naturally, I'm gonna uh, put ice cream so on I did, my bread. I did that two days ago. <laughs> Are we gonna see like gourmet food, like deep fried lobster, at, like thirty bucks a pop, or deep deep we fried prime rib? Do you really? Yeah, we have um, deep fried filet mignon, deep fried lobster. Wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tommy's tearing up. Maybe, you know what I haven't done is mix the two together and call it a deep fried surf and turf stick. There you go. I haven't done that. Yeah. I fried wait, wait, filet, I fried do lobster. Your, do your employees like often give you, like you'll find in your mailbox a piece of paper that says, hey, how about this? I bet everybody's I, giving you I get suggestions, right? Suggestions from customers, from employees, from friends. I get friends I haven't seen or talked to in New York. They'll text me at weird hours. Hey, what about this? I'm like, oh, we did that last year. Or, you know, we... Sometimes we did, and sometimes like peanut butter, peanut butter meatballs. A friend of mine told me that the other day, and out of L.A., and I said, "Gosh, I think that was 2013. We did that." <laughs> hey, ch- peanut hey, butter hey, meatballs. It was hey, delicious. Hey, chicken, and may I call you as chicken? Please. Thank you. <laughs> it's my first name. Have you ever invented something that you don't like? Uh, but yet, um, I won't the, sell it. I mean, if I don't like it, I won't sell it. So, so one year we did the deep fried. Um, uh, caviar Twinkie. So I put it was the 125th anniversary for the Orange County Fair, and I wanted to do it for $125. The idea was to give all the money to Chalk Hospital, which we did. Yeah. We sold a bunch of them, and we gave them all the money. I didn't keep a dime, but it was an ounce of about 50 to 75 dollar ounce of caviar on a 20 cent Twinkie, and it was amazing. And what, and what, according to the people who love caviar. I mean, just I mean, just as you did it. But I'm, like, yeah. like, come on. I mean, it was good. Well, yeah. hey, hey, right before, before, hey, right before we go to the break, I want to say something. I just realized, Sully, Chicken Charlie, Bob Taylor, We're all, all three of you, all three of you give to Breaking and Entering oh. Christmas. Yes. I Thank thought you were local. Love Breaking and Entering. All right, we'll be back after the break. We have two more guests to introduce you to. By the way. The Sully Band is now called Caviar and the Twinkie. Take it away. Is there something we have to promote? There is something. What are we doing? We've got a gala, Make-A-Wish Gala fundraiser for Make-A-Wish San Diego on October 14th at the Grand Del Mar. The Sully Band is playing. There are a few tickets left, and they're also looking for sponsorships from big businesses that want to contribute. And I believe, I know the Sully Band's playing, and I think you're having a special guest or two singing with you. Yeah, Tommy Sablon. He's Tommy Sablon. He's going to play some yeah. play some crappy classic rock song, but it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Would so go to our website. With, with the band, like, would you do the, like, the last song you did, what was uh, last week, which, by the way, is one of those songs that every uh, is familiar with. It was fantastic. Will you, will you like, pull up one of those? I uh, thought so, too. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> enough about, Sunspot, enough about me. What do you guys think about Bob Seger, Sunspot, Baby. I think I it can was do a, that. But what, can you come on stage with us and do a couple of songs? At the Make a Wish thing. The Make a Wish thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you'll be overshadowed by. Woo! You know who? Oh yeah. So if you didn't see this, we were we had Make a Wish uh, about six seven weeks ago as a guest, 
And there was this little girl named Avila. And of course, you know, we decided, let's talk to her. And we said, what was your make a wish? I needed a recording studio inside my house. Next question is, Tommy says, do you play an instrument? Uh, yeah, I play like 17 instruments. And she's like <laughs> this high. I, do you sing? Yes. You know where this is going. Yeah. Off the cuff, we, I said, what do you want to sing? She said, I want to do... Um, I'm Yours. I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. Pick up a guitar. I, of course, ask Brian, uh, who's, uh, Brian Jordan, who plays with uh, Dave Matthews and, and James Brown and Lauren Hill. What are the chords, man? I acted like I knew the thing. She rehearsed it on a commercial break, and there was not a dry in the house for like the next eight weeks the in San Diego. It was the best. And then we, and then we did our uh, fundraiser at uh, Belly Up, and I got to tell you, I get emails every day about that thing. I mean, I got, I got a phone call last night from San Francisco from a person, a good friend of mine who I hadn't talked to probably in 10 years, said, dude, what's with the Make-A-Wish? It was, it, I think her career is on the way because of what Make-A-Wish did. So, got to tell you. I mean, I'm getting choked up talking about it. Can we get, can we, can we get a little guitar, like sponsorship? I'll pay for it. Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring out our next guest. I love if I put him on the spot on TV. Isn't that fantastic? It's my opinion, we need more people, more role models like this dude right here. From Boys to Men Mentoring, Joe Sigurdsson! All right, good to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, nice to be here. Thank What's you. up, dude? Charlie, all right, all right, all right. Hey, Bob. Joe. Tommy. Joe. Bless you. Bob. Weren't you at my... I love this song. Weren't you at my door in 1982? Didn't I recognize you from a, a collection? Effort? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you owed me money, baby. <laughs> Dude, you look like Dan Fouts. Do my job. You look like Dan Fouts. You did that. Who did you do? You did the car guy. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I tell you the best kept secret in San Diego? We have the best... Elton John in, uh, impersonator, right there. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. You're, fa you're fantastic at that. And what I love about you is not only that you mentor uh, young men specifically, but you came up. You got a pretty colored story. I mean, it's I it's, it's not. You know, well, uh, yeah. I, I, I delivered newspapers as a kid. I was very poor. It's like way worse than that. What happened? You know, our 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 sordid past is our greatest asset, Sully. So. Yeah, no, you know, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I had great parents, great family. You know, I just, I found some darkness. You know, I, I got in over my head early. I was a teenage father. I was running a printing press at night and doing landscaping during the day. And, you know, uh, and you were this big at eight years old. That was I was, I was a big kid, and uh, yeah. So I, uh, you know, got into drugs and alcohol and. That led into, you know, dealing, and the dealing led into some nefarious activities, and uh, I became a bit of a menace to society. But, you, but you know what? Look at, <laughs> and, and th those were dark times for you, but yeah. look what it did. Look at, look at the end, uh, look, play that videotape out to the end of the movie, yeah. right? How did it change? Well, you know, uh, you know I, 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 I stood at the kitchen window crying watching my wife pull away from the curb with our two children on her way to her mother's house going what's wrong with me you know no. and I, I found myself at the doorsteps of Alcoholics Anonymous at 28 years of age and uh, none of those guys cared where I'd been or what I had done uh, they had all done the same and worse and they just want to know how was I going to clean up my mess and move my life forward and they suggested I do these steps and they took me through them, you know, and I learned a lot about unconditional love and, and acceptance and active listening and encouraging and, uh, you know, um, and then of course, you know, our primary purpose is to help the alcoholic who still suffers. Sure. So once I got some traction underneath me, you know, then it was my job to help the next you guy. You paid it forward. Pay it forward, man. And how did you start that, Boys to Men? Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, so I was eight years sober, and I had become a reasonable human being, and I was coaching my son's little league team, and uh, there was, uh, I had a bunch of eight-year-olds, and... Uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, it was great, it was great, it was great, of course. <laughs> Um, and after our first practice, the next day there was there, the, uh, 
there were four boys at, at our house, you know, and they were all on the team. And, you know, and they were Gabe's friends, they were my son's friends, but they also, you know, none of them had dads. And they wanted to play more ball. So, you know, I, this was in 1994, so I just threw everybody in the back of the pickup truck. and we well, Literally, he, like, launched them. It was a problem. But, you know. <laughs> we went, yeah, I took them to the park, and we played ball. I mean, that you know, that was the beginning of it. When, uh, so what was the genesis? What was the that spark? What was that light bulb? What was that tip of the spear that said, you know what? I could help thousands of these kids if we only had an apparatus to do so. You know, uh, the, 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 that came much later. You know, like when, when, when the, so when these eight-year-olds started turning 14, 15, and their moms were calling me saying, would you please talk to them? No. You, know, like, you know, and they, you know, um, so I would start having these circles. I was having like the little... AA meetings where we told the truth and we made meaningful choices from an honest place. There yeah. was no con game, you know, and and so it started as just a, like a, a neighborhood program. And then um, I was involved in some men's work, uh, 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 an, uh, uh, an international men's organization called the Mankind Project. And, right. and I had done I had done an experience like a lot of guys in recovery were doing this this retreat called the new warrior training adventure weekend yeah and it and it was like a you know kind of a next level fourth and fifth step work and um i thought at the end of that i said oh this is great could have used this at 14 not almost 40 yeah. and there were a bunch of guys uh in that involved in that work that felt the same way and so uh, there was a call to action to create a mentoring program i was already doing this stuff so got with some guys and and, and they brought their sons and their grandkids and Nieces and and, and 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 I brought my crew of guys and we uh, we started it and um, so today yeah for for the folks that don't know yeah wh what is what have we created here I, so what I, we and I don't want you to be humble because it, okay, it's very so, significant so yeah so 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 we you know we did a lot of research we did a lot of writing we did a lot of trial and error we screwed things up we figured <laughs> things out and then we wrote it down. And then we gave it away. And, and, and Boys to Men is an open source program. And uh, guys around the country and around the world started downloading our stuff and saying we need help. And, and from 2001 to 2007, my, my partner Craig McLean and I, we were on planes 20, 25 weekends a year flying around the country teaching this process. And we established at one point 35 Boys to Men centers around the country. Wow. And uh, here we are 27 years later, and there's still 19 operating and 12 more worldwide in Germany, yeah. India, South Africa. Yeah, that's cool. And, and we're talking about boys in their teens to, teens to adulthood, mm -hmm. which are, that's the point when you need to, they listen, need a father. Listen, right? yeah, these, this is when they're deciding what kind of men they want to be, you know? And if you got a kid that's struggling and he's two or three degrees off, yeah. you play that out for 15 years, he's in yeah. another universe. Coming up next, come on, we have a presentation to do. We're going to give a presentation out to Ernie Hahn, Bob Taylor, Joe Sigurdsson. I like to call him Chicken, but his name is Chicken Charlie. Tommy Sablon, it's the Tommy Show, as we like to call it. By the way, the Emmy Award winning. That's right. Yeah. Great to have you. Big hand for the Sully Band. Those guys, come on, you guys. Hardest working band in San Diego. So good. It sounds so much better without me, don't you think? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Okay. I don't know. Okay, fine. Did you do uh, Jumbo Jack Flash? Three, two, one, two, three, four. Huh. That's funny. We do wants, want to bring out our next hear, guest. Okay. We do want to bring out our next guest. You can't bulldozer me. These people want to hear you sing. No, they don't. <laughs> we want to bring out our next guest. <laughs> That's not for Ernie. We want to bring out our next guest because you we said that have three times. Hold on a something to present to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on. Um, I wasn't prepared for this. Some kind of wonderful and here, here we go. Can you do that? Some kind of wonderful. You guys got to get get on your feet then and make some noise because Which he means I don't like, know. just clap a lot for him because he needs the encouragement. Yo! Everybody stand on your feet and worship Tommy. I don't need a whole lot of money. I don't need a big fine car. I got everything that a man could want. I got more. I got more than I can ask for. I got me a sweet, a 
Can I vote that Tommy you. sings at every show? No, 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 no. If I must. <laughs> All right. Now, Next we week have... Do, we, we're <laughs> done with the commitment. We love you singing. Let's uh, let's bring out the next our next guest. guest. I know. <laughs> we need to because there's a presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. He has earned his robe today. <laughs> this is Ernie Hahn's 10th appearance on On the Air with Sally and Little Tommy. Ah! Give it up for Ernie Hahn. Let's go, let's go. go. Already keep I going. got a rope. I love the rope. <laughs> Ernie's like this. No, 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 no. no. Ah, so me, Ernie Hahn. Hold on, let me give me my yeah, place. No, yeah, yeah, it's, it. it's Ernie's 10th appearance on On the Air with Sonny and Little Tommy. That means he earns his robe. Mm. He is along with Shotgun Tom Kelly, Jesse Lozano, and Eddie Papani. Ernie is the fourth person to get the robe. Wow. Nothing says creepy like those four guys in a row. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, now, would you like us to get you like, like Jesse? Got, didn't Jesse get like a leopard print robe? I don't remember. I, yeah. Unfortunately, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, if, we, if we were to pick a robe for you, wouldn't it be something out of Caddyshack? Yeah, probably a little crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but it's a thought. I appreciate I appreciate you having me on last because I literally took down a pound of Chicken Charlie's chicken. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's, that is that's, uh, that is the best teriyaki chicken. I've had a lot of teriyaki oh, chicken. Man. I'm just crushing. I'm like, just I wait, love it. Wait, I love don't it. call me. By don't the way, call me. Ernie, nice head fake because what you've had a lot of is there's six empty bottles in the green room right now. So <laughs> hey, just, it was strictly I, protein. Can, can, I, can I say this? Um, you are a San Diego icon as much as your dad and your grandfather were, and I love the fact that. We have Ernie Hahn as a regular. Give him a big hand, please. Ernie. One of my best friends, of course. Love you, buddy. And it's so cool because every time Ernie comes, his sister comes along too. So give it up for his sister. I was looking to high five her, but she specifically, I know how she is, she went out of the window so that, that I couldn't get to her. So she's, <laughs> hey, you have an event happening next weekend, I believe. We do. Next weekend is the Del Mar Wine and Food Festival. Um, and I'm really proud of it. It's uh, you know, Troy Johnson and Claire Johnson of San Diego Magazine, Chris Finn and, and the Polo Field Surf Park guys. And um, it's going to be, there's two days of grand tasting, which will be on the 9th and the 10th uh, out of the Polo Fields. And, so uh, the grand tasting. Those are the grand tasting wow. days where you buy a ticket and you get access for three or four hours to literally eat and drink as much as you want. And it's going to be, uh, it sounds bad, but it's really good. It's like 80 different restaurants, uh, Michelin star restaurants like Valle and others that are going to well. be there. And then over 200 wines, spirits, beer, seltzer, but it's all out in the polo fields with other activations that are happening. A portion of all the proceeds are going to Feeding San Diego. And then if you go to delmar.wine, you can see all the information. But we've got 20 other events that are happening during the week. Uh, on the 8th is the Drew Brees Celebrity Pickleball event, which is out of Bobby Riggs. Hey, are, you, are you any good at pickleball? I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. just, he, you know, just watched the show last week? During COVID, he had a pickleball court oh, for, in the sports oh, arena no. for himself. <laughs> Do you know some guys... I knew, are, I knew somebody. You know, some guys are handy, like they could build like a, like a, like a, uh, you know, a patio cover. Some guys are handy with, uh, you know, fixed electricity. Ernie's handy at golf, <laughs> pickleball, ping pong, darts... And uh, surfing, and surfing, and the occasional and the occasional drink recipe. Wiffle ball, bocce. Wiffle ball, bocce. I've got a whole decathlon. What are you not good at? Um, wine and food festival. Humility. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you have room for eighty-one restaurants? Because I know a guy right here, Chicken Charlie. Chicken Charlie is amazing. Chicken Charlie. First of all, I, I love this guy. I just met him today, but I got to tell you, 
Anybody that introduces himself as Chicken Charlie right out of the shoot is my guy. <laughs> <laughs> that is a guy, I'll never forget his name. Thank I was you. putting it in, I said, I don't even know what your last name, you're going in as Chicken Charlie. Is his your last, last, name, right. his last name is, he's like, hey, call yeah. me Chicken. That's right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was super proud of, we'll have the Wonder Bus will be there, it'll be music. I tried to get the Sully you band there. You know what, would you stop? Claimed, claimed they're too too big, too large. We could Okay, have made, okay. You know. <sighs> but next time, next time, Sully band. I would love to play on your Wonder Bus if it had, Oh. We're gonna do double double wide bill next year, go, so fine. we can get everybody. I on. can probably get the Tommy band there. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost the show. I've lost my band, and I've lost all credibility. Um, by the way, can I just say that you sound great when you do these songs? Oh come on, you do. Yeah. Oh. In fact, we might have room for the Tommy band. We there might have go. one band spot left. There you go. The oh, following you know weekend. What? I will cut you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I have so many questions. I have questions for Mr. Taylor. I have questions for Joe, Mr. Chicken, and Ernie. Coming up right after the break. <laughs> Give it up, Bob Taylor, Ernie Hahn, Joe Singerton, Chicken Charlie, Tommy yeah. Sablon. I'm Sully, that's the Sully Man. Welcome to On The Air. Casting is don't eat while you're on the air. I've had like right. I've had like 17 pounds of your chicken. <laughs> Thanks. So Thanks, good. Charlie. Um, Mary, hey, give it up for the live audience. Give it up for the live audience. And the Sully Band. Give it up for the Sully Band. Hold on. Hey, Mary. Speaking of, speaking of the audience, Mary, how do we get in here if you want to come in and watch the show? You email me at audience at loft100studios.com. We'll get you in here. Yeah. All right. Question for Mr. Taylor. Sometimes, well, first of all, thank you for always helping with breaking and entering Christmas. My I mean, pleasure. I mean, it's always I, a pleasure. It's. I think you've been helping for like it's a over, long time. over 25 years. Yeah. Wow. Um, is that wow. all you've done this? 27. This is our wow. 20. My bad. 27. <laughs> it's a great thing. Seven years. It's amazing. Yeah. Let's get around. Come on. Come on. Bring yeah, it yeah, yeah, you're right. Come on, come on. But on, um, but from time to time when I call you. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> we all know where this is going. When, from time to time, when I call you, there's times when you when you're in Africa. Yeah. What are you doing in Africa? Well, it, we went there to uh, build our own sawmill to cut ebony, which we use for the fingerboard of the guitar, mm -hmm. to make sure that it was cut properly, legally, morally, ethically. <laughs> you know, pay people properly, and then we started a program also planting, which we do through UCLA. So but why Africa? Like. It's where ebony comes from, really? and we're in the country of Cameroon, which is a very difficult country to be, and that's an understatement. Um, and uh, it's it's rough, but it um, it helps. Well, it helps make sure that it's done legally. I will tell you, as a as a I don't, I don't want to say, like a, a featured artist, a, a a sponsored artist, whatever. The guitar they got for me this last time was like a forty five million dollar guitar. Yeah. And all of the wood came from every other country except for the U.S. Can you talk about <clears throat> the supply chain that goes on? Because, I mean, let's face it, you're the, you're the CEO, owner of the company, and you're out there sourcing wood. That not, should tell you how important it is. Not the owner. Well, yeah, not the owner. Well, okay. It's, it's, <laughs> well, an, it's I, an employee owned, owned company. And thanks, Tommy. Well, I, I love getting out there. And, you know, if, you, if I could take anybody to a rainforest and they look at it themselves and see the degradation of it, they would they would be a believer that we're walking across the threshold of the way it was when wood seemed inexhaustible to the way it is. Wow. And it's just gotta be fixed. Would there ever be a time that you started going in the direction of carbon fiber? Cause, cause you know- Never. That's a, yeah. Cause there's lots of different kinds of wood we can yeah. use. We make a lot of guitars out of Los Angeles street trees municipal trees that grow and and um, so th th one of the greatest for us are trees in our cities that come down so we work with West Coast Arborist and every time they get a good tree we know about it when they've got it and they only work for the cities in, all through California and um, 
So when those trees come down for the forever, they've just been mulched and dumped over the side of the hill. Now we're making guitars with them. Tens of thousands. Could you make us a guitar? <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> While you're not supposed to eat on, on the air. Yeah. <clears throat> Could you make us a guitar out of a Tory pine? Um, a section of a Tory pine, if it was a good, if, if it was a, that good sort of piece, you could make the guitar top out of it. Asking for a friend, you folks in Del Mar, uh, contact the show. If you got a piece of wood about this big, and uh, it's got to be just right. Could be a sappy. sappy. Got to be just right. Chicken, okay. Chicken Charlie, where do you get your Oreos when you <laughs> try them? Do you travel? Are you ready? Where? Yeah. Are you, are you sure they're environmentally are you friendly? Guys ready? <laughs> where do you, where do you, where do you, you <laughs> want to know where he sources his Oreos? From Medellin, yeah. too. Where do you get it? Costco. <laughs> you know what? Best well, cookies let's, in town. Let's, let's talk about the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> Could you get away with doing like a, you know, they have, at the 99 cent store, they have like fake Oreos. Could you do that? I mean, I could fry your shoe if you want. I don't know. I, I could fry it, but I mean, I, I buy Oreos from Costco. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm thinking it's good. Oh, yeah. It's but good. I buy, I mean, where else would I get Oreos from? I'm Chicken Charlie, not Nabisco. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you ever get calls from those companies? Yeah, like when we wanted to deep fry Girl Scout cookies, the Girl Scouts didn't want me to do it, so I backed off, but I didn't understand why. What? Yeah, so the following year, I reached out again and I said, I really love Thin Mints. I buy them all the time the from best. your Girl Scouts, and I want to fry them at the fair, and I'll buy five, 10,000 boxes from your girls. And they said no Wait, so again, and then a third time, they said yes, and I did it, and we sold 10,000 boxes. My goodness. You know what? Do you know why Stop. Apple Computer is so famous? Why? Because Chicken Charlie started, started uh, uh, deep frying uh, Apple mouses, and suddenly that was the success <laughs> of Apple. I don't understand why you have to ask permission. Um, I don't always ask permission. I so sometimes you, I beg, you beg for forgiveness. Yes. Like, yeah. Once in a while, a specific item you know it could be troubles. You ask, but like deep, like Slim Fast Bar. Mm -hmm. I wanted to deep fry a Slim Fast Bar. <laughs> <laughs> So I made a mistake of asking, and they said, "No, you're going to ruin the rep what, what was the words? They're gonna, you're going to ruin the integrity of our product." And I said, "I'm going to make it better." <laughs> but the following year, I did it. I got their permission because they sold the company to somebody else, and it was a lot better. Right. Deep fried. <laughs> yeah. What is, what, is, what is that weight loss drug? Saxenda. Deep fried Saxenda. This year. Let's go. On the ears. On the air. We continue after the break. Bob Taylor, Joe Sigurdsson, Chicken Charlie, Ernie Hawk. I'm Sully. That's a little time to got to Sully down. Thanks for coming. What a day. Look, I mean, look at this day. You know, we're, we're here uh, down at Mission Beach. We're, we're trying to recreate the old days when we'd have 500 people on the beach and spend all day catching waves and raising money for boys to men. What brings me to Boys to Men? I would say that it is changing boys' lives, being impactful, showing up every day, telling them the truth about really, really what happens, and uh, opening up a space for them to uh, share what's going on in their lives. Uh, on my school, uh, every Friday we got, on sixth period, we got Boys to Men as a group of therapy and, and help. I'm from Honduras. It's a very far country right here. And uh, it's uh, been affecting me a lot because when I came, I, I wasn't uh, like friends with everybody, and now I can talk with everybody who I can and to be friends with everybody. Thank you, Boys to Men, for helping me, and thank you. I'm gonna say a huge thanks to Joe Sigurdsson. Come on. Wow. That, that, that kid gave Torres Anderson. I want to hear this. Okay. On the ears, on the air, we got Bob Taylor, Ernie Hahn, Joe Sigurdsson, Chicken, Charlie. Oh. I'm sorry, that's a little tiny. That's a sorry thing. But most importantly, look at this live audience. Give yourself yeah. a Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming. I can't believe that we don't get paid for doing this. <laughs> wow, what one. a great video. Yeah, that was a oh, man. Okay, uh, who, talk about the kid. That, that's a, that's uh, so a big uh, The a last big shot, Gabe Torres. Yeah. You know, this kid is amazing. Amazing musician. Okay. Uh, plays guitar like crazy. You know, but, you know, um, uh, came to, to the country by himself, 
Both his parents are dead, was adopted by a family, and, and the... Thanks uh, for the uplifting story. No, I'm, I'm just telling you, the adversity of this kid... But here's, what, here's the deal. He graduated from Perkins uh, uh, last year. He's in... Um, I can't remember the name of the school, but it's a... It's a university and a high school. Oh, yeah, that's a, it's we, Harvard. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I tell, can I tell you, anyway. er, Ernie and Tommy, and uh, I think we're the three people that grew up here in San Diego, right? Like, our hardest thing was um, that the that the Slurpee cups were out. Um, yeah. when, we, when we went to seven. <laughs> like, honestly, like, we were wussies. We had to, like, there was nothing we went through. The, any like like that, and uh, that kid is what? 18 years old, 17? No, he's no, he's 14. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Yeah. I feel, <laughs> but honestly, uh, but isn't that interesting that you know we're uh, you know? Uh, all I'm telling you is he's a freshman in the in this university high school thing. I got a call from the principal because he was talking about boys. To wasn't men. your first call, was it? No. <laughs> Wait, a long time it was. And 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 he's just enamored with with Gabe Torres, and he wants to know what the hell is Boys to Men, and and how did you guys prepare this kid to be who he is and what he said? And and you know we didn't prepare yeah. him. He, you know, he glammed onto something that was nourishing his soul, yeah. and 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 ran with it, and he's running with it right now, and he's just a fantastic young man and terribly successful. Is so. your number one fundraiser the Caddy Hack, or is it the Hundred Wave Challenge? This year it's Caddy Hack. <laughs> Caddy Hack is going to outdo Hunter Wade. Right. Uh, they're, they're both important. It's a both, great, yeah, great organization. And we are happy to sponsor. I just want to make yeah. sure that, like, how do we bring more money in? What do we need? Yeah. Well, we need surfers right now. With the Hunter Wave Challenge is September 16th. You know, HunterWave.org. You register. It, you create a landing page while you're registering. It creates a link. You send that link out to your family and friends saying, I'm doing this ridiculous thing for this wonderful cause. Yeah. They don't know what Boys to Men is. They don't care, but they love you, Sully. And they go, look what Sully's doing. Hey, I'm sorry, uh, you broke up there for a second. Can you say, <laughs> and, uh, can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> they love you, Sully. Thank you. And you guys all get that? Look at what Sully's doing, and I'm going to throw 100 bucks at Sully. And, it, and it's a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising model. And, it, and it's, it's, it's been hugely successful. Um, we've raised in excess of a hundred, half a million dollars on this event in the past, and, uh, and we're kind of sucking air this year. So if you surf, we need you to go register, hunterweave.org. Okay. Could we get a little Good. Tommy and a <clears throat> Sully at an on-the-air page that we could go? Dark, yes. Dark. Because yeah, nobody gives yes. more philanthropy than this uh, right? Arts and Flowers guy here. I mean, let's think about it. <laughs> Break and entering. Give little Tommy yeah. yeah, Come on. Yeah. Okay. But... 27 years. No, honestly. I've been good for 27 years. Joe Sigurdsson, you're an angel. No, you, you really are. Thank so, you. So thank you. And thank you to Bob Taylor for being here. Yeah. Because you know what, Bob? When I first said to Sully, hey, let's try to get Bob Taylor. I said hard no. He, they said, there's no <laughs> way Bob Taylor would come here. And you, sure. always, you always pick up our call and you always say yes. So thank you very much for it's doing this. I love you. Guys. And, and, and by the way. I love you. Because I know you are not comfortable with any sort of high, uh, a spotlight on you, um, and, and and part of your mission as a as a company has been to to pay it forward all the way. And I got to tell you, man, you are contributing to the San Diego GDP, the report card of our economy, in a very big way. We, you have changed lives since 30 years, 40 years now. Can 50, we just 50, one more time? 50, 50. I mean, honestly, good for you. And now, not to put you on the spot, but can you do Jumpin' Jack Flash? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Chicken Charlie. Chicken Charlie. To me, he's chicken. Not What's up, chicken? Okay. <laughs> Could we do something next summer where me and Tommy and uh, Ernie, Ernie's uh, picking up trash, but me and uh, Tommy are doing the, uh, like, a cash register thing? Let's like, to raise it. money? You guys want to work? Oh, yeah. Well, we're, we're raising money for us, though. Let's do it. I want you guys to come work the front register, yeah. Can we, like, and I think we should create a sandwich like this. It's got a, a jelly donut on top. Like this. It's got Sully bacon hat. somewhere. Let's fry Sully hats. Let's fry Sully hats. <laughs> Put some chocolate and powdered sugar on them. There I love the idea. Here's the guys, problem. I, love, that, I, love I would not even be surprised at that. Ernie, what time, what, what's the date on uh, wine and food? September 9th and 10th. Del Next Mar weekend. Got wine. There's there a total of 20 other events that are going. Celebrity chefs, a little bit of everything. 80 restaurants, 200 wines. Maybe the Sully Band as well. So stay there tuned. There you go. And maybe Chicken Charlie. Chicken Charlie as well. By the way, yeah, me and Chicken Charlie have an event outside your event. Oh, okay. we've already arranged. 
right. Tommy's the MC. Give it up for the audience. Let's go. Bob Taylor, Ernie Hahn, Joe Sigurdsson, Chicken Charlie. I'm Sully. That's old Tommy. That's the Sully band. Thanks for coming on the air. We'll see you next week. <laughs>